Praise God. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Loving Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. We thank you for your grace, love, mercy, and anointing, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You are our wonderful God, Lord. As today, Lord Jesus, we continue in every day of our life to make you the center of our life, Lord Jesus. We believe you are giving us that understanding, Lord, not to look at our blessings or not to look at what we need, but to believe that you have finished it on the cross that everything is already given to us in righteousness in right standing with you that there's nothing which is away from us there's nothing which is kept apart for us lord everything that you have given is life and life in fullness lord jesus we thank you we thank you and we praise you lord we thank you for each and everyone who's joining in today and everyone who's listening on youtube we believe the holy spirit is teaching them giving them the answers of everything that they need there are so many questions in our life lord jesus that we want to change. We want to get answers. We want to be a new creation in Christ, Lord Jesus. And above all, we want to be fruitful families for the kingdom of God, Lord. We thank you for blessing us, anointing us, protecting us. And we believe you have anointed us with your Holy Spirit who's speaking through us and giving us the revelations of the glorious kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Praise God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we take authority and we bind all powers and forces of evil in the air, in the ground, in the water, in the underground, in the underground, in underworld, in nature and in fire. You are the Lord over the entire university and give you glory for your creation. In the name of Jesus, I bind all demon force that have come against us and our families, and we seal all of all of us in the protection of your precious blood that was shed for us on the cross. Thank you, Lord, for surrounding us with your mantle of love and protecting us from all the stacks of the evil. Amen. <coughs> Almighty, we thank you for this pregnancy. We thank you because you have taken sickness out of our midst. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 15. And so we will not have any of the negative symptoms of pregnancy. We will not have morning sickness, swollen feet, diabetes, hypertension, or pre eclampsia. Your word dedicated. We shall not suffer miscarriage and the number of days you will fulfill. This pregnancy will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. We are tried, and your word says, You tribuk all the dimension of our sake, and ye shall not destroy the fruits of our womb. <coughs> we, Malachi chapter 3 verses 10 and 11. We thank you because children are your heritage, God. And we are so grateful to have received your reward of the fruit of the womb. Psalm 127 verse 3. We praise you because our children will be like arrows in our hands. And we will be happy because we were full of children. Psalm 127 verse 10. Great is the peace of our children, Lord, for they shall be taught of you. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 13. Lord, we bless you because you know your thoughts towards us are of peace and not of evil to give us an expected end. Jeremiah 29, 11. And we declare that 
the expected end will be the safe delivery of a perfect and healthy children every good and perfect gift in form above and come from the father of light to whom there is no vision of shadow of turning james 1:17 therefore we are assigned by public babies and are good and perfect in jesus name <laughs> we will not be afraid of anything concerning this pregnancy in the safe delivery of our baby we did not fear and doubt for the lord has not given us the spirit of fear but of love power and a sound mind so timothy chapter 1 verse 7 we cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself to give the knowledge of god we bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ to corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 We let the peace of God rule in our hearts, and we refuse to worry about anything. Colossians chapter three, verse fifteen. We shall not labor in vain, for have thought to be bringing forth. For our offspring are the seed of the blessing of the Lord. Your joy will be in our strength, Lord, for you are the strength of our life. Philippians four, thirteen. Father. <laughs> Pain is under the curse of the law, and your word says that Jesus bore our pain. So we rebuke all things and declare that we will have a short, easy, painless delivery in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter sixty-six verse seven. We will not tolerate any pain or complication during our pregnancy and delivery. Amen. Yeah. Prayer for pregnancy. <coughs> Heavenly Father, I thank you. I praise you, Lord Jesus. Galatians three thirteen says that you have redeemed us from every curse of the law. Whatever the curse is, it has been destroyed and nailed on the cross. Lord, you have redeemed each one of us. <coughs> We thank you so much, O oh Lord. that as we lay our hand on our womb we speak life into this womb we rebuke the spirit of death that is causing miscarriage and abortion in the name of jesus lord your life is flowing into this womb bringing recovery and restoration of the baby in the womb in the name of jesus as we listen and understand your word day and night we are changing every negative report that was going against the conception of our baby we thank you lord that a great transformation has taken place in our life in the in the mighty and glorious name of jesus thank you father thank you lord jesus thank you lord holy spirit the curse of barrenness the curse of miscarriage is destroyed in the name of jesus our baby is conceived with no symptoms of complication patients of any sort and is going through full term our baby is delivered healthy normal pain free in the name of jesus amen and amen amen amen, amen. good evening everybody good evening once again good and evening. welcome good morning to you and good, good day morning. to yes, others welcome. welcome once again to another teaching about making god the center of your life so last week we were learning about humility and how we make god the center of our life so when we make god the center of our life we are no more in any self pity and we humble ourselves and when we call ourselves a humble person what we do 
a humble person knows that all this does not come due to their own effort, but has come because Jesus did it on the cross for me. That's why I qualify to be humble and that's why I am blessed today because of what God has done for me. Many a times we feel humbleness means the self-pity that we have on ourselves that oh, we are not able to do this, we are not able to do that, and we need someone to help us. That is not humbleness. That is just being in self-pity for yourself, and more it is of a selfish nature, where you do not want to do anything to give glory for God. You're just looking at yourself. Oh, if I do this, what would that person think? If I do that, what would that person think? I was never a person who prayed or who held my Bible. But what will that person think if I now go and tell them about God, about our Lord Jesus Christ? You are not looking at what you are, but you are looking at the Jesus who died for you and how much that person can be saved by you giving the word. I remember most of the time I will refrain myself from giving the word to people who we don't know whether they know God or not. But there are times when I stepped out from that shell and I said, Lord, I am doing it for your glory. And I gave the word. And there are times when you're not able to give the word to a person who's in pain, who feels that everything is over. There's no answers. <laughs> Excuse me. There's no answer in their life. Nothing at all. At that time, you saying a silent prayer for that person will definitely, the seed is getting planted and that person God is sending is ministering angels to go and minister to that person. Because we believe if a person is sick, what God had said in the word, lay hands on the sick and they will recover. If he said it, it is certain it is going to happen. It is happening. It has happened. So there are many times as being a nurse, when I'm not able to speak to my patient who is in so much of pain, all I say, Lord, I just lay hands on the sick and the sick recover. I tell you, sometimes these some patients are given to me where they be really very sick the whole day or at any point of time. And when I go to do that patient, take care of that patient, everything gets to normal. Two days ago, there was a lady, a blood pressure sat always at 220 and 120 is a below reading. And um, every time I did a blood pressure in the shift when I was taking care of her, not more than 160, 140. She's saying, she just straight away told me, it's because of you who did it. And I was sick, talking to myself and I said, it's because of my God in me who has already healed it. And I only said this to her, believe that you are already having normal blood pressure. Isn't it? Sometimes we are unable to get straight to them, but the way we behave, the way we reflect our work will definitely make them know that the Lord Jesus Christ is in us. Praise God. So many a times we use the Bible in such and such a way for what? How much better I can get. 
Do we think we use the Bible in that way? Yeah. How much can I get from the word of God? How much can I get better? How much can I progress in my career? How much can I be a better person? Yes, we are trying to do all that using the Bible, but we forget Christ is the center of everything. All he wants us to do is that relationship with him to believe that he died for us. Praise God. So Christian life is not about getting better how much I cru crucify myself is important. What do we mean by crucifying ourselves? Crucifying ourselves is suppressing down all that you want to speak all that you want to retaliate, all that you want to react to every situation, that is what is crucifying. When Jesus died on the cross, when he was crucified, imagine when a person is stripped naked, what will that person first do? Pardon? Uh, what did you say, sister? When you when a person is stripped off their clothes, what will that person first look for? For clothes to cover. For clothes to cover mm. their shame. Isn't it? To yeah. cover their shame. But what did Jesus do when he was stripped off his clothes, nailed to the cross? What was he doing? I can't hear you, sister. Not very clear. Can you hear me now? Okay. Ah, now I can hear you. He just let it go and uh, he said, forgive them. Yeah. He was praying for them and asked, Lord, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. But did Jesus think of at that time looking for clothes to cover himself did you think do you think it was not hard for him to do that to just get clothes to be covered or his father in heaven could have just threw a cloak on him would have that been hard no from heaven he would have thrown a cloak or he would have even darkened the skies and made everything pitch dark so that no one sees him could have could that not happen yeah, yeah. That could have happened, but his father wanted him to die for all that we have done, all that we are suffering at this moment, all that you say, it is my burden, it is my problem, it is my situation, it is my curse, all that you claim. Jesus said, I stripped it apart and I've died and I did it all on the cross. All you need to believe there's nothing more you need to do, my child. All you need to believe that I've done it. And whatever you are waiting for, it's already been received supernaturally. Claim it and believe in it. Praise God. So it is not me, but people draw Christ through me. Every time we want to reflect Christ, we want to put ourselves, our names in it, but that's not the priority. You need to just reflect who you are and you are just the pizza box. The pizza is Jesus. Once the pizza is eaten, the box is off. No value. It is to be thrown in the bin. But until the pizza stays in that box, it has a value. We all are waiting to receive that box. Praise God. Hallelujah. That is what it says in James 4 verse 6. God gives more grace to the humble and the humble he will never the humble will never exalt itself, but always exalt Christ. 
So when you are humble, you do not exalt yourself in everything you do, but you exalt Christ. And that's what we see in this group. Yes, sister, I can do this. I can do that. We can do like this. You just text me and let me know and we can do it this way, do it that way. Why? Because our motive is, I believe I am already blessed. But there are many who are still waiting to hear these testimonies, are waiting to hear the truths. And I'm ready to go and help in doing that wherever I can do. Praise God. Because the humble will never do anything for himself. And that's what Christ was. He did not do anything for himself, did he? In his time which he was living on earth, did he build homes for himself? Did he build gardens for himself? Or did he build riches for himself? Did he ever possess a house? Oh. It's very true, isn't it? Did Jesus say, I'm going back to my house. I'm going to rest with my family. I'm going to party with my family. I'm going to do this with my family. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. Sorry. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Because the humble will never do anything for himself. Yes. Jesus did not build things for himself, did not build any treasures. His treasures was to preach and set people free. But so all that we have, the treasures that we have, does not mean that Oh, we shouldn't have anything. We have to just sell and get rid of all that. It's not that. How much are you holding your treasures as your priority in your heart more than the word of God? Yes, to live in this world, we need money. I cannot say I will not touch money. I will not do it. I need that money as well because that's what in the current world you need to use it. But you don't need to be behind the money, behind it in, and think that it is the only source of a wonderful life. That is the last part. Money will come. When you seek God, he will provide for you. Do you ever think that the birds in the air or the flowers, it ever thinks what I'm going to do next? How am I going to get the nutrients? The carers for the flower plants, the birds who don't even have anyone to care. God sends them in different seasons to different places to migrate for their food and they sustain their life. Isn't it? They only have a small nest which we don't even know that when rain comes, it, the water seeps through the nest. But they are so clever how to build their nest, where to build it and at which place to build it. Praise God. Let us look at Philippians 2, chapter 2, verse 3, which we did last week. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Thank you, sister. You would like to read it, sister? Yes, please, sir. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in loneliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Praise God. So let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Many of us saying, oh, I need to go to church now. Please don't disturb me. Like to take, for example, I was just preparing for the session before it could start. 
And I got a phone call and I don't know that person, but that person wanted to speak to me. And I first told my mom, sorry, I can't speak. That person would have heard what I said, isn't it? So it doesn't matter because I don't know that person, but I was like, Yes, I am preparing for my class, but it's very important to operate in love. It's not all about me doing all the actions when I cannot implement my actions. So I said five minutes if I speak to that person and just say hello, I don't think I'm going to lose anything. And I was just talking, talking to that person. And it was so beautiful that I told her, you come over because Brother Johnson is coming over to our place. You come over, we are going to have a Thanksgiving prayer in our house. And the conversation led to bring more people to Christ. How beautiful is our God when we just give our time and operate in love. Not thinking me, myself and I, what I am going to do. Even if I come for this session any day and I don't have anything to teach, the Holy Spirit will bring the right words out. Do you all agree? Mm -hmm. There are times we had this session when we didn't have anything. There are times when I was not even able to do anything, but it used to be the most glorious session. I remember once when we didn't have anything planned and we were just all speaking testimonies after testimonies. And it went more than an hour. Do you all agree? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Because we are not coming with our own strife, with all our effort, with all that we want to do, all that we have brought, all we are striving for and bringing to this place. This is a banquet table which is already prepared and the Holy Spirit is speaking through each one of us saying, just help yourself. Take your food, your spiritual food which is prepared for you. What you need is already prepared. Each of us as a plate served, it is up to you to stretch your hands and take it. And that's what the Lord says today. If you are making me the center of your life, all you need to do is just stretch your hands and receive me. I don't want you to strive too hard to go beyond your abilities or capacities, but just be ready to accept me as your personal savior. Praise God. So let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Vain glory, nothing to glorify yourselves. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. So you can misunderstand the scripture. At times, it can be misleading to you. Many a times we can say we are useless, bitter. Nobody loves me. No one cares for me. You may feel you are an humble person like this. As I explained when I started off, many of us feel we are a humble person because we do not, because we are call ourselves useless, bitter, nobody loves me, no one cares for me. Self-pity, you may think, is making you humble. No, not at all. Nothing of that can make you humble. This is not a humble person, but this is a person with pride because you're always thinking of yourself because self-pity is pride. I don't know, a few days ago, I felt the same. Something is not working, Lord. I can't just prepare for this session, Lord. Why? Why? And then the Lord reminded me of this when I started writing for the session. He reminded me and said, you do not need to strive for anything, neither 
you are making yourself humble, but you're making yourself proud, thinking that I'm only doing this, I'm only doing that, I'm only doing everything. No one cares, no one does, no one did. That is just making you a person of pride. So you never know how the Lord teaches you, but the Lord just wants you to have that one-to-one -one conversation with you. He just wants you to speak to him and pour out your heart to him. That's all he wants you to do. So what is this loneliness? means thinking less of yourself than low of yourself. It's not thinking low of yourself, but less of yourself. That only is lowliness. In other words, did Jesus think low of himself? Did Jesus think low of himself? Yeah. In what way did he think low of himself? So low, you're thinking low of yourself means self-pity. Did Jesus have self-pity? Of himself? No, no. No, he did not. He did not think low of himself. He did not say, my father does not love me. That's why I need to be crucified. I need to be nailed to the cross. I need to be rejected. He did not ever think of it. He knew there's going to be a painful suffering. He asked, Lord, asked his father, can you please take this cup of suffering away? He was meditating, meditating and speaking to his father. He could have just been disappeared, isn't it, from the planet. But our God wanted him to do this for our sake. If he did not finish it on the cross and at that very moment when Satan was tempting him and told him, to bow down to him, to bow down to Satan, and he will give him all that, that he sees in this universe. But Jesus knew he is already God, and everything is his. He does not need to bow to anybody. Praise God. So Jesus thinks low, did not think low of himself. But instead, he knew his father and his father knew him. Jesus had, Jesus did not have any low self-esteem or did he know who he was? Jesus, even though he was God, but he did not think about himself. Even though he was God, he did not think about himself. He did not think when he was naked on the cross to cover himself. Instead, he was praying for those who nailed him. Father, forgive them. He was thinking less of himself that is called lowliness of mind. Praise God. So we're going to go to the next topic on this. How to make God the center of our life is by dying to flesh. What is dying to flesh means? Uh, I think uh, dying to flesh is putting, you know, uh, others first. Even though it is hurting myself, but, you know, we are humbling ourselves and we are giving um, preference to others. Praise God. Anyone else? Uh, Resma, sister, Tina, sister, ne kya poocha? Ek bar Hindi mein bataiye ga? Okay, praise God. Thank you, sister. Uh, uh, sister Tina, uh, bata rahi thi, hum log, 
जीसस को कैसे हमारा एक सेंटर हमारा जीवन का एक सेंटर बना सकते हैं तो व्हाट डिड यू यूज दैट वर्स सिस्टर टीना डाइंग टू योर फ्लैश डाइंग टू फ्लैश डाइंग टू फ्लैश सिस्टर पूजा मीन हां क्या बोलते हैं ओके एग्जांपल देती हूं मैं एक किसी को फगीव करना किसी ने हम लोगों को हर्ट किया है ओके किसी ने हम लोगों को हर्ट किया है और बहुत मुश्किल है उसको फगीव करना है ओके मगर हम लोग क्या करते हैं ये बहुत दिक्कत होती है फगीव करने के लिए मगर हम लोग जीसस को यू नो हमारा जीवन का एक क्या बोलते हैं इज गॉड थैंक यू जीसस और हम लोग उसको फगीव करते मैं डाइंग टू आर सेल्फ मीन्स बहुत मुश्किल है करने के लिए मगर हम लोग चीजस के ट्रू नाम करते हैं हाँ हाँ प्रेज गॉड थैंक यू थैंक यू जीसस ठीक समझ गए I gave the examples is it in मतलब सॉरी फिर मतलब खुद के बारे में नहीं सोचने का खुद की हिम्मत खुद के बल पर भरोसा नहीं रखना मतलब खुद के बारे में नहीं सोचना ऐसे बोल सकते हैं अपनी जो इच्छा है खुद की आकांक्षा है उसके बारे में नहीं सोचने का थैंक यू सिस्टर पॉल प्रेज गॉड सो ये सिस्टर रेशमा यू आर ऑलमोस्ट क्लोज <laughs> you will yeah there all right so i'll give you an example if you see a dead dog and pour hot water on the dog will the dog react yes yeah. no it's a no, dead no, dog no no no, no, no <laughs> sorry it's a dead dog <laughs> okay no and the next thing if you kick that dog no no if you stamp it nothing Nothing. nothing it cannot do anything it will not react or it will not hurt you because it is dead and the same way if someone insults us and if that pains that means i'm yet not dead in that area someone insults you and those words hurt you so you are still not dead in that area and that area is unforgiveness but if someone hurts you and you are not any way bothered about that pain it did, does not disturb you at all that means you are alive to your flesh sorry sorry die, i think die confused die to the flesh die, die to the flesh right sorry yes. sorry yeah if someone insults us and if that pains that means i'm yet not dead in that area and i am still alive in my flesh but if it does not hurt me then you are dead to your flesh and that is what is dying to flesh so, dying so, to yeah, flesh so, so, Dina, sorry. yes sister you can explain sister puja aapko samajh mein aaya yes sister mujhe samajh mein aaya yes god yes sister so there are many times when insults we have forgiven that person but we go back to maybe speak to that person isn't it we go back we want to speak to that person we don't want to just say i forgiven but i will not talk to that person i don't want even to look at that person even that word the name of that person increases every anxiety that's not is not forgiveness so when you go back to speak to that person you get so troubled you get so upset you don't know what to speak and that is what is meaning you are still alive to your flesh you are not dead to your flesh you still are holding all those thoughts all those memories maybe not everything just a little how will that person react to me 
But if you are dead to your flesh, you will go speak to that person. That person may not insult you or may insult you, but it does not concern me because I am doing it for my God who stripped all his garments on the cross and did not look for any cover, did not look for anything to cover himself, which was the first important thing. Instead, he was looking at praying and forgiving that person. So if this, you keep reminding yourself every time how oh, Jesus, when he died on the cross, he did not look for clothes to cover himself on the cross, but instead he looked at praying for them. The same way when people insult you, there are times when many are going through in extending their family in bringing fruitfulness in their family, words fly from different areas. Oh, your sister is pregnant now. What about you? Oh, your brother's wife is pregnant now. What about you? Oh, you have already got all this in your life now. What about the next? When all these words fly unto you, you don't know what to speak, but those words become bitter to you and you are unable to die to your flesh. You become live to your flesh and you start questioning, Lord, what have I done wrong, Lord, that I am stopped of this blessing? And that's when you are still live in your flesh. But instead, Lord, that person who spoke to me is to be blessed with more abundant blessing, Lord. They are looking for people with children, Lord. They are blessed with more children, Lord. They are blessed in every situation on their life, Lord. Are we ready to bless them? Excuse me. Uh, are we ready to take and ponder on those insults? Praise God. What are we ready to do? So take, for example, a plant. If you keep watering it, it grows. But if you don't water it, what happens to the plant? Yeah, it's going to die. It will die, yes. So it is the same with your flesh. The more you're thinking you're about yourself, you're feeding your flesh, the more you shift your focus to Christ on what he has done for you, that's when you start to die to your flesh. The more you're thinking of all those insults, yes, last, I think the week before, I had this question in the session. Yes, we have forgiven that person. We have doing everything good to that person. But that person is repetitively being rude to us. That's when you need to be a dead dog. Whether it, the dog is kicked or hot water or anything is poured, the dog will not do anything. Even if it's the most fearful dog, it can't do anything the same way you will not react, neither act, neither suppress that thought into your mind or into your heart and brood over it. But instead, you will start praying for that person. Praise God. So the more I study on God's word, I focus on his word. I meditate on day and night. What happens? The light from him begins to shine in me. I am in this situation where I'm hurt. I know many a times when I used to be in a situation when I don't have answers, then I will start sitting and pondering in detail with the word of God and I will start writing scriptures and I'll start meditating on that scriptures and the moment I start focusing and meditating on that scripture I tell you that situation would be 
absolutely destroyed and erased from my life. But the more I keep contemplating and thinking, oh, if I did this, that would have pleased that person. If I did that, that would have pleased that person. If I did it this way, that would have pleased that person. No. You meditate on the word of God. You start getting that relationship with God and God will take care of your situations. So a day will come that I forget myself and myself begins to die. What happens? I begin to die. All that self-pity, all that which is in me, that self-esteem, that pride, everything begins to die. That means dying to flesh. I cannot do with my own ability. For example, if I say, I watch TV. I shouldn't watch TV. I don't want to play these games. I don't want to get into these bad habits. I don't want to watch these series. If I keep saying I shouldn't, I shouldn't, I shouldn't. Do you think it will happen? In the sense, do you think that you will be away from all these things which you shouldn't do? No. No. It will make you do more. Yes. Yeah. It will make you do more. Like I was also trying for the past few weeks. I did not want to watch movies, especially I used to get a bit disturbed with movies where most of the time either females are being portrayed of abuse or female children are portrayed of abuse. So that was like impacting in my mind. And I was saying, I'm not going to watch. As long as I was saying, I'm not going to watch, I watched more and more. But the moment I, I said, Lord, you show me something, Lord, to do at this time. But I still want to be with my family around. And the Lord showed me what I could do and how I can get away from watching this. And what I started doing is sitting and playing with my daughter. That was better than being focused on the television. Praise God. So the more and more I say I should not, you will end up doing the same. Have you watched that instead of dying to your flesh, you become alive in your flesh. So when you're watching all that what happens, instead of dying to your flesh, you are becoming alive to your flesh. Because everything that you are watching is what is getting you into the facts of the world. And you are disconnected from the word of God. And that was definitely happening to me. Getting disconnected from the word of God. Getting disconnected from having that company with my daughter. But just focusing on something which is going to be a disturbance. Which is not going to be of any value to my life. So the more and more I set and Sit and study the holiness of God, the love of God, the more I focus on him. Then the light of Christ begins to destroy the darkness in my life. That's how my flesh begins to die. What happens? When you sit and study the word of God, what happens? The holiness of God you can see. The love of God you can see. The more when you focus on them, what happens? The light of Christ will begin to destroy all that darkened areas of your life. And that's how your flesh begins to die. A humble person will never take credit. By saying, oh, I stopped watching. I stopped watching this. I did not 
I did come out of uh, uh, a humble person will never take credit of what he's done, but instead will say, I did not come off out of alcohol, but alcohol left me because my Christ took over me. So alcohol had to leave me. And I begin to focus on the world so much more. The spirit of God set me free from alcohol. And that's what happens when a person needs to be set out from uh, addiction. All we need to do is focus on the word of God. That is why dying to flesh, I do not take credit because I know I'm not the one who is crucified, but my flesh has been crucified through Christ in me. I'm not that pitiful person. When I focus on God and he begins to become the center of my life. The same way when you stop waiting, watering, sorry, when you stop watering the plant, the plant begins to die. And the more and more you water it, the plant begins to get a new life. So when you want your flesh to die, you do not water it with self-pity. You do not water it with a low self-esteem, saying, I cannot do anything. I am not able to. Many of us do that. We are not able to do this. We are not able to do that. Just take one step forward with Christ. Nothing is impossible with our Lord Jesus Christ. So dying to yourself is when someone insults me and I still feel the pain, that means I'm live in my flesh. But if I do not feel the pain, it's not that I do not feel the pain because I'm suppressing my emotions and not speaking it out. That's not not feeling the pain, but I got that peace, that joy, that happiness, even when that person insults me, is abusing me, and I'm ready to speak to that person much more than I used to speak in the sense with more love, I'm ready to speak and bless that person. That's when you are dying to yourself. Praise God. Amen. I think it was a pretty intense topic today. Anyone would like to share something that came to your mind or anyone feels that you all on the process of dying to yourself, to your flesh? Yeah, before having an understanding of the word, it was very, very difficult for me, you know. Even though I wanted to forgive them, you know, it suddenly used to come up, you know, all of a sudden. Again, I used to have that same um, going in my mind, again, repeating the same thing in my mind. But now, you know, having that understanding of the word, um, learning the word of God, it makes it much easier because the minute the thought comes, we can surrender ourselves and ask Holy Spirit you know, to take over those thoughts and you know, but fill us with that peace, joy and compassion, you know, towards others. And it makes a big, big difference with them. Praise even God. Yeah, praise God. Even today uh, in the morning, okay. Uh, it, it is a small prayer because I normally do it like, you know, in the day, but uh, today in the morning, you know, just thought feeling like that. And uh, before the session, actually, uh, and then I just said that prayer, the Lord, bring me with your love, deep joy, you know, 
so that I can be, I can love, I can show that compassion to one another, uh, even the difficult moments. And and thereafter, like, you know, I was filled with that love, sister, because ultimately that love, that joy came into me. Praise God. Thank you. Praise God. When I understood this dying to my flesh, I understood that, Lord, I'm trying to forgive, but I'm trying to do it by myself, my effort. But the moment when I said, Lord, I cannot strive anymore. I can't do it anymore, Lord Jesus. But you take control of the situation. I'll sit back and it will all come to its base. And the Lord was giving me that rest, that joy, and no more hurt feelings. That hurt was slowly being like how oh, when you put uh, uh, antibiotic or a cream to heal the wound like that. God was slowly, slowly, he was putting his healing touch in me and saying, you do not need to be offended or worried about the situation. I will take care of it. There's no offenses. I will take care of it. You don't have to do anything. Just rest in my love and operate in love. Praise God. And uh, you gave a beautiful example, Mr. About you know when we say uh, is that I'm not going to do I'm not going to do I'm not going to do I'm not going to touch or like you know anything which you are not supposed to do it and then you know automatically you tend to do it even though you 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 are saying to yourself I don't want to do it but ultimately you do that and you know you go into the back uh, the same uh, um, routine. Uh, because this this used to happen with me. I I always you know used to say no. Today I'm not going to you know do something like that. Which is which I'm not supposed to do it. Which is taking me away from the word of God. But you know ultimately when I used to sit in the night you know just to uh, ponder what happened in the day, and I used to then I should realize okay if I didn't want to do it, I did it. So you know it, this is a very good example which you give. And now, uh, when we say surrender to, you know, Holy Spirit, okay, because I normally do, like, you know, I surrender to Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I don't want to do, but I don't know how to do it, but you help me, and you need me how to do it. And, you know, I, I completely forget, you know, that, that that situation. And then when I realize, okay, today the day has passed, and I have not even, you know, did that, what I, what I was not supposed to do it. So this is the, you know, um, uh, 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 what I can say is this is uh, not getting that word uh, uh, dying to us is not dying to us right? it's not with our strength sister. it is the you know the Holy Spirit is taking control and we do we do not have to uh, work ourselves because we have given the control to the Holy Spirit we do it on our behalf yeah, you do not need to strive. The yes, more you're yes, striving, yes. you cannot. Mm -hmm. Even I have sometimes when I speak to my patients and they say, I'm in the process of uh, stopping smoking. Then I say, I just say this one word. Don't let smoking, you don't have to leave smoking, but smoking will leave you. That's all I will say. Some people, it may be, it'll strike them at some point. But that's how I use the word of God. Because I cannot at that time maybe give them the full detail. But I always tell them this. You don't have to leave smoking. Smoking will leave you. When smoking leaves you, definitely, and you will never get back to it. Praise God. Anyone else would like to share? 
me tina actually yes, when things are not happening in our life we think that uh, are we kind of more towards god or are we moving away from god actually on thursday i'm not able to attend the session since i went out with my teachers but when i came i was okay i was in a, in a positive mind but i have all positive people around us but when i came back home i feel so like lonely like why i why i did i resign my job there in that place so no god has a plan for everything that's what i felt but you know are are we having a connection with god more or are we are not having our own soul with god we are listening to different sessions different tang sessions everything but am i keeping myself towards god all utterly or with the human thought that was my that was my mind towards yesterday fully i felt sick when i went to the hospital then the doctor said you are it's not cold you are dressed too much i said okay but why i am dressed too much i am why should i think about the human thought why am i thinking about godly word so no i should have my own mind set towards the holy spirit not by anybody saying attend this session come for this session pray to god no i must connect myself towards god all utterly that was like i would say i am i really having the feel whether i am having the holy spirit with me when in monday session when i had a pain in my muscle i was towards god towards the holy spirit in connection with god so that means we should have our mind set towards the holy spirit all utterly not having any any distractions in our mind or anything like that when we prayed that in tongues i had nice muscle pain it was healed then why why the other days why you are why we are feeling so stressed i don't know then last night oh i uttered in the tongues around 9:30 so i went on praying and praying and praying and praying i was completely like i felt so connected towards god that we must keep ourselves towards god go holy spirit not by anybody saying to us not by any reminding us we should have our own connection towards god i felt like that amen so that's the revelation that you received and many of us as we come new into christ like when we come in new we think if i didn't attend this session mm. i'm not i'm missing out that blessing and i'm yeah. not able to focus because that is another work of the evil one who makes you feel guilty you could have attended that session but instead of that you are going and doing other things in the world it's from the evil one god never makes you feel guilty if you do not come to him he is still ready to embrace you but when you go out i just say an example there was a lady she was very in uh active in doing all the ministering and everything so one day her husband said can we go for a movie and she does not like to watch movies at all so how as a wife she needs to subdue to her husband needs to respect what he says and needs to do it isn't it so as uh, she went for the movie and when she was looking watching the movie all she was imagining how god was working through every episode every screen thing which was going on in the movie that it was like god was doing different different things so she started watching the movie in a different aspect and the way she was watching the movie in a different aspect she enjoyed it with a family and she was able to give that love and that quality time with a family than just going and sitting there and saying i don't want to watch it but you force me you know we need to operate in love so when you are called somewhere else and you are not able to attend a session the maybe the word of god or anything what is my purpose lord i am going from you because how long am i going to sit and listen that should be 
the action. The word of God is with action. It is not a dead word. So when you went with your friends or anybody, are you sharing the word? Are you making yourself look like you were prosperous in everything you did or you are in pity saying, oh, all this is happening. Nothing has changed. Yes, nothing seems to have changed in my environment. I do not need to speak it. I can speak what I have. Everyone today, can we say, thank you, Lord, for the gift of life that I'm alive sitting over here? Can we say that? Yes, we can definitely say that. Then how much more, if you start counting the blessings that God has given you, it would be immense. But we just get focused on what we want than on focused on what we already have. Praise God. You understood, Tinky? Yes, Tina. Okay, praise God. So that is what it is. You do not need to feel guilty of anything if you your focus is on God. The seed has been planted. The harvest is plentiful. When God does, he does mystery. We'll just stand in awe, wouldn't know how, how could our God do this. Praise God. Anyone else would like to share anything? Uh, praise God, Sister Tina. Uh, praise God, Sister Pooja. Uh, uh, last night you shared me uh, this video. So, I have seen them before. And when you sent me to तब फिर मैंने देखा नहीं ये आ, मतलब आ, मतलब सही वर्ड देती हैं रिस्मा सिस्टर या पर सिस्टर प्लीज इसको ट्रांसलेट पर सिस्टर नहीं है रिस्मा सिस्टर प्लीज इसको ट्रांसलेट कर दीजिए ना टीना सिस्टर के लिए Okay, what did she say about the video? Sister Pooja? Yeah, that video I have also seen one or two times. Her video I have also seen one or two times. And yesterday, when Sister Tina shared me, the Holy Spirit told me to see them with our Jezalem. So thank you, Sister Tina. Okay. He has seen that video, but yesterday that the you uh, when he sent that video to her she uh holy spirit spoke to her and said you know you listen to that video one second and um, uh, I, I think it was not from the jclm video uh video right sister it was a different one yeah it is not jclm yeah. yes, yes that's what yes, she sir. said she, she said that you uh, holy spirit told her to watch that video as well Praise God. So, did you that sister Pooja? Up, 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 but कल सिस्टर टीना ने शेयर किया तो मैं उनको देखी थी और उनको मैं कुछ थोड़ी-थोड़ी लैंग्वेज थी क्या उनकी बहुत फास्ट निकल रही थी तो फिर मैंने उनके और एक और एक वीडियो सेम प्रेगनेंसी को लेके है तो मैं वहां जाके देखी कि वो कैप्शन में हिंदी उसको ऑटो ट्रांसलेट करने का है तो मैं देखी उनको uh, this time, Holy Spirit told her, you know, to listen to that video one second. She had a bit difficulty to listen to that because it was in English. But later, she found another video which was translated from English to Hindi. So, with the caption, she's saying. So, she labeled okay. to, you know, yeah, she labeled to uh, listen to it. Praise God. 
So yes, Sister Pooja, I remember when I was sharing my testimony, you asked me, from where did you get that word uh, that said, because I told you there was a video which I seen, it was not from JCILM, which was a couple who was sterile. I mean, he didn't have any sperms, zero sperm. That's how he were, they, when they went to the doctor, the doctor said that. And when they came out of the clinic, they were all devastated. But the woman who was with the husband said, I believe I'm walking with children. And in the next four years, she got four children. And the doctor could not believe how can a person get pregnant with, a, with, a, with no sperms at all. And all the children look identical like a husband. So that was the video which was describing it. I knew it must be a bit high for you to understand. But you were you asked me a long time ago, which I never found it. And then I found that video. So I wanted to share with you. So that's what it is. Praise God. Thank you, Sister Tina. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Okay, Sister, we close, Sister, in prayer. Yes. I mean, we do the Thanksgiving prayer. You want to do it, Sister Reshma, or should I? Can you do, Sister? Please. You can mean? You do it. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. You want me to do? Yes, I want you to do. Please. Oh, okay. Praise God. Loving Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for for each and every one of your Lord. We believe, Lord Jesus, your Spirit has moved into every heart, Lord Jesus. And every heart is changing, becoming a new creation in Christ. All the old is gone and the new has come, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for remolding us, Lord Jesus, rejuvenating us, Lord Jesus, to be perfect children of Christ. As we die to our flesh, Lord Jesus, and not say, I am hurt by every situation and say, I'm alive to my flesh. No, Lord, we want to be dead to our flesh by making you the center of our life. And we thank you for blessing for us with the fruitfulness of everything that we desire today. We are definitely getting answers to our prayers right now as you said lord jesus when two of you two or more of you agree together and ask anything in my father's name it will be given yes lord we all agree and believe every heart's desire is answered right now in Jesus' name. Whatever is our desire, we are you have answered it. And the answer is yes and amen in Christ Jesus. We thank you for giving us a time to come and give glory to your mighty and matchless name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Amen.